Serious, crime scene cleaners. What was the most disturbing thing you had to take care of? I've cleaned up after a lot of car crashes. A lot of it is very ghastly as I'm sure you can imagine. One thing I learned early is how sharp bone shards are. They're very very sharp and can easily cut through gloves and your skin. Worst part is how often there are alcohol bottles in the cars or just a general smell of alcohol on dead bodies. I was at a scene recently where someone jumped off a balcony onto the street below. The balconies of the second and third floors extend out further than the others. The person left pieces of themselves on the third floor and the rest of them continued down to the second floor. Another one that I attended a few years ago was a suicide attempt in a nursing home. A lady cut both of her wrist and waited to die. The only problem was that the wounds were too superficial. She had a bit of time to kill. So she made herself a smoothie, watched some TV, went to the bathroom, basically just going about her normal day. She eventually changed her mind and called for help. Friend had to clean up a 9mm job gone wrong. Guy shot himself in the head but it wasn't fatal right away so he walked around the house bleeding everywhere until he dropped to the floor. I did this for about 8 months or so, and actually quite liked the work. It was very interesting and rewarding. Smells are always the worst, but the one that sticks out to me is the suicide we cleaned of a 16 yo boy. He had taken all of his clothes out of his closet, put a few black garbage bags on the ground, and sat there and shot himself once in the head. It was disturbing because of the amount of forethought that went into it. He had quite a while of preparing for it, and still went through with it. It was heartbreaking. As a fire department chaplain, part of my job was clearing the trauma from the room. So I think I count. I've cleaned some real messes. Shotgun suicides. Homicides. But most disturbing for me was a car accident where an infant died. Broke his neck I think. Nobody else was too seriously injured. Prying that infant from the arms of his mother is a moment seared into my brain forever. I can put corpses on gunnies all day long. Pick skull fragments out of a wall. Or collect limbs from the side of a freeway no problem. But the wails of the mum. Her desperate rocking and tight grip on her child, and the smell and look and feel of death on a person who hadn't even yet experienced life. It was wrong. It just felt wrong on the most primal level for me. Not exactly same, but worked at a retirement home where people would commit suicide way more than you'd imagine. It was a small place so occasionally I'd do other things in my IT job like help the maintenance man lift things. An old guy, no family, killed himself. Left a note to the administrator of the building that was typed up nice and neat. It thanked everyone for taking care of him and was really sweet actually and saying he was sorry we'd find him, etc. And could we please look after his mice. Things about that. Was creepy how sound minded he was. Or maybe it's good I don't know how to judge. But he made a lucid decision for sure and sad he didn't think he had anything to live for since he was in good health. He typed it on a computer. Turned out he used the receptionist's computer. She thought he was writing a letter to some friend or something. Even helped him with it. But he was writing in Polish which she didn't speak. So she was really freaked out. He didn't seem to have any mice. So they sent the maintenance man to search for mice right away cause that could then be a problem. He asked me to help cause he thought he'd have to move the guy's furniture around to find the mice. Guy didn't kill himself in the room so I figured I wasn't going to be looking at anything disturbing so I go. Looking around no mice, no cage for them and no poop or anything around the room. Which was pretty much just confirming what we all thought. So we're going to move furniture when we realize no one has cleaned out the room yet. So we should check drawers. We found them. We found mice and also small birds. But they were all dead and stuffed and dressed up with weird little clothes and accessories and little name plates. It was sad as much as anything. Shotguns are messy. Shotguns to the skull are really messy. Brain matter goes everywhere. It's tedious to clean because it literally goes everywhere. You have to comb the entire room and everything in it and very small bits and pieces of brain matter will be stuck to things. I used to work next to a auto seat and top shop. A guy shot himself in the head while sitting in his car at lunch in a remote part of the parking lot of the factory where he worked. It was July and they didn't find the car for a week. The windows were rolled up. The insurance company didn't want to total the car. So they had it gutted and rear at the shop next to me. Apparently he wasn't a good shot. 
so his heart continued to pump until he bled out. The smell was putrid, and even when they had replaced everything where blood had soaked in, the smell had permeated even the harder surfaces. I don't know what the insurance company did with the car. Never buy a baby blue early 90s Ford Topaz. That insurance company should have watched the Mythbusters episode on that. Unfortunately I'm at work and not able to really talk about the disturbing ones in the detail that they weren't but a quick one was a semi truck had been stolen and the accused ended up having a heart attack and dying in the truck and sat unattended. For a week in 70 80 degree weather. Buy us up. We did not get that job. Another quick one was an unattended passing in a hot tub with a prosthetic leg. Can't remember how long they were there but the coroner had left the leg floating in the hot tub. That was a pain in the butt job. My aunt killed herself not long ago. She called and said goodbye to her husband, my uncle, and told him he was a great father and nothing would change that. Then she took a shotgun and killed herself. So me, my grandfather and uncle had to clean the room. We spent hours scrubbing blood out of the carpet, ceiling, and my great great grandmother's quilt she made for their daughter before she passed. He still lives there with their daughter. Update. Not same uncle she was married to. Thought I should clarify. Jesus man. That's sad. My condolences. I was a patrolman in a rural area when a 2 or 3 year old child's head was crushed when a car rolled over her in a driveway. The child was picked up by an ambulance and I was left to clean up the pile of remaining brain matter. Kid deaths are the worst. Not exactly related but my father was a firefighter when I was an infant. He once told me a story of a time when he was reporting to a fire and there was a report that someone heard an explosion come from inside. Turns out a guy who was inside decided that shooting himself in the head with a shotgun was a better way to die than burning alive. My dad was the one who found the burned headless corpse. Honestly if I were in a situation like where I faced being burned alive and there was no way to escape but had a gun there's no freaking way I wouldn't use it of course actually having it happen is different do I dk. I know there's a good chance I'd die of smoke inhalation. But burning alive seems like the worst way to die. Not the goriest, but certainly the most haunting. One kid in my high school hung himself. Now it is not gory. No blood. No burnt skin. No cracked skull. No scooping brain matters from the floor. Just a purplish face. White eyes. Tongue hung out. As if he was trying to scream for help out of regret. And yes, I had to carry his corpse down four floors. Threw it onto a truck so that they could carry him to a hospital like people tying a moose on the roof of their trucks after open season. It is way worse than it sounds. But I do not know how should I describe the scene to you. And if you are asking why I have to do that. It is because I am a student who happened to get used to carrying dead bodies around. So it is natural for people to ask me to carry a dead kid. Older people like to get drunk and hang out in hot tubs. After a while you drift off to sleep and drown none the wiser. Fast forward 72 hours. Human soup. Brownish grey soup with chunks. My first reaction was to think that hot tub temperatures are much lower than the temperatures we typically cook meat at. But then I did a quick search and noticed that sous vide cooking is often done at temperatures below 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I might be late to the party but my uncle once had to paint a hotel room after a triple homicide happened in the room. The people killed were nuns and were dismembered in the hotel bathroom. He told me instead of cleaning the walls he was ordered to just paint over the blood splattered walls. He was paid double for the emotional distress he had to go through. That's pretty terrible. The walls would probably smell for some time and just, I don't get it, terrible. As a fiduciary, we were called in for a lot of different tasks related to the estate of a deceased client. One such task was entering and cataloging the entire home of a woman who passed away. I don't remember from what but it was natural causes. She had a dog who eventually died of dehydration but not before trying to chew his way out of the front door. She and the dog were found several months after she died. Their bodies turned to liquid and literally melted into the carpet and then the concrete floor underneath. By the time we were on the scene it was a hazmat situation. I had to suit up, wear protective garments, gloves, foot coverings and masks. We entered the home after the body had been removed. There were millions of dead and live flies all over the house, in every room. We had to first document, and then dispose of, every single thing in the house. Anything that had to do with food, cooking, eating, 
storing, had to be disposed of because it was all considered a biohazard. You couldn't just take the items and wash them. They had to be removed and tossed. Even the appliances had to go. The smell was horrid and seemed to permeate the walls. That was my only experience with cleaning up after a death. But not the only time I had to suit up. Being a fiduciary was metal. Someone hanging themselves with the wire from the light in their bathroom. The wire was coiled and caused them to spin around as it cut into their throat spraying blood everywhere and ultimately beheading them. What a thing to discover. Family member. Or whoever. I'd freaking faint. Not the most disturbing story. Compared to what else is in this thread. However. I worked for a restoration company. In marketing. Though. And I worked a very prominent double homicide in a small town in CA. The murder happened in broad daylight and I was on site less than 12 hours after it happened and stood in the same place where they were killed. And I have to say. 1. Hazmat does an absolutely incredible job. You could have eaten off the garage floor in that exact spot and there was not a speck of blood anywhere in that garage. 2. Disturbing that I stood in a spot imaging what was happening not 12 hours prior. Their poor family was so distraught, but still so kind to myself, my company, and the countless police officers CSI guys that were coming in and out. I once was working for a company contracted to clean a biohazard from a city housing apartment complex. The man who lived there had a fight with one of his friends who proceeded to stab him and escape. He was left without a phone and bleeding from multiple stab wounds. He knocked on his neighbor's doors repeatedly, based on the blood stains in the hallway, but no one answered. He bled out and died in his apartment. My medic unit was dispatched to stage near a police standoff one guy in his house with unknown number of guns threatening to shoot himself and anyone who tried to stop him. We're there for an hour maybe and we heard obviously a gunshot come from inside the house. The SWAT team storms and I get in the back to grab the monitor to run a EKG to make sure he's dead. One police officer comes running out of the house screaming for us to get in there. So we grab all our bags and run in. The guy had the 12 gauge under his chin. And for whatever reason it didn't kill him. It only blew his bottom jaw off. And tore up his face. Our first thought is protect the airway. My partner is suctioning as much as he can we ended up filling our portable suction container about the time we got him intubated. I really don't know what happened to him after we dropped him off at the trauma center. I hope he got help for whatever he was dealing with. Man, I don't know why I clicked this thread, but I regret it. My eyes are welling up. Thank you to all the police, firemen, EMTs, tow truck personnel, and anyone who has to deal with this stuff. You do tough work. I own a carpet cleaning and restoration company, so I don't deal in bodies. But in the theme of the thread, thank your firefighters EMT people as they get the brunt of the bad. But that's 99% of the time. I have to tell this from third person. When a morbidly obese woman died, she easily was 500 pounds, and nobody finds her for 3 weeks. All alone. The bodily fluids leak out everywhere. So badly that they penetrate all the way through the mattress. Drip into the carpet, penetrate the pad, and go through the wooden subfloor. $20 respirators are worth the money. What is not fair is that the insurance company will pay $20,000 for that restoration which takes about 2 days. There is like $100 in cost, operating costs, not gear which is definitely part of the job. Seriously after you own things like burn boxes and the right cleaners, your costs go way down. Anyway, easily 19k in 2 days. Makes me feel bad for those underpaid people that get to remove the rotting corpse. Guarantee it's worse and they don't get 19k. Hey firefighters, EMTs, you should all be in the cleanup biz on the side. I'm late but here's my story. I worked at a fire and water restoration company that also did crime scene cleanup. I have done a few different scenes. Suicide. Murder and natural causes. The worst one was the gun suicide of a 12YO boy. The body had been removed by the time we had gotten there, but we had to clean up the blood and the brain matter on the walls. We also had to remove some of the furniture in the room, and cut out the pieces that had any substances on it. It was hard as heck to go through toys and cartoon themed furniture looking for blood and brain. I can only imagine what the parents were going through. My father-in-law is a paramedic and is sat beside me. 
He told me that one time an old guy had a brain hemorrhage while walking down the stairs. He fell down the stairs in a position that left his face pressed against a radiator. No one found him for days and the heating kept coming on and repeatedly cooked his face melting it to the radiator. I just hope he was dead before he hit the radiator. Remembered another, suicide by train running 60-ish miles per hour. I helped the funeral home pick up remains scattered over 83 yards of track. Me and a buddy ended up doing a make ready on a condo that had been the scene of a very bloody fight murder. Nobody by the time we got there, just blackish blood pooled in the floor of the kitchen, splattered all over the inside and outside of the refrigerator, ceiling, and cabinets. We received very scary news after we were done, found out the victim was HIV+. Plus. This was over 25 years ago. And the only person I knew than that had HIV had already died. The smell of that place stuck in my sinuses or somehow scarred my brain. For a week or so, I would catch whiffs of the rotten blood when I wasn't there. Yuck. Fortunately for you HIV only lives outside the body for a very short time. It is a very environmentally sensitive virus. My husband is a firefighter paramedic and one accident he responded to still freaks him out and it was years ago. The early 20s couple out drinking on Halloween and having fun with friends got into a fight and left. Boyfriend thought driving 100 miles per hour while drunk was a swell idea. Hits pole, splits car in half and it's a mess. Rips a leg off, but didn't kill her. Walking up to the scene, they see a Halloween mask on the ground. The kind that covers your whole head, has hair and everything. Fast forward a minute and they realize not a mask. Dude's head was degloved. Degloved. My husband had to help the coroner collect body parts, which included the chick's leg wedged under the dash, complete with high heel on, and the mask of course. I have no idea how he does it. Dog poop. Not from the crime scene, but from ever they use. Most criminals seem to have a penchant for not being disciplined enough to let out their dogs and instead let them go on the carpet and they leave it there and don't clean it up. Maybe that's why they're criminals. Performing everyday functions allows them to keep a regular job, but they're not self-disciplined enough to perform those functions. Not crime scene cleaner, but the literary police and had to clean up as well as there was no crime scene cleaners. Responded to a suicide attempt by acid. Dude started drinking some kind of acid but regretted and managed to call his neighbor. Local police was on vacation so we took it. Got the guy into the car. Blood and slime everywhere. My second was making him throw up on the floor of the car while the driver gunned it to the closest helicopter approved football field. The stench is still with me. Bile rotten meat and iron for some reason. We were power washing the interior for 8 hours the day after. I find that blood does smell like iron. Former carpet upholstery cleaner here. Suicide cleanup was fun. Skull and brain fragments mixed with fleshy blood stains and the smell of excrement since sometimes people crap themselves too. That was an interesting job. For those in this field, how do you all get your mind right to get over the severity grossness of the situation and get your job done? Human decomposition has its own smell. It's not like bad meat or roadkill. It's distinct and once you get some in your nose it will stick with you forever. If you are unlucky enough to encounter the smell again you will know it immediately. I have shared this tale before. I was an autopsy tech for a spell in a small town. I went with the coroner, who was also my professor for forensic anthropology, to a scene. This was not so much a gory, and I have counted and organized the parts of a child flung into pieces after getting hit by a semi. Story is a bit eerie. A student has gone missing just about a year earlier. He was found. There was a scattered pile of bones on the ground, most still inside his university hoodie and pants. The moment that became creeper was when I noticed others looking up. Everyone was quiet, somber, and focuses. Looking up I saw a telephone cable with a tightened and barely recognizable noose at the end. That's how he knew what went down. There was a hunter's nook high up in a tree with his backpack, a candy bar wrapper, and a piece of paper with writing that did not survive the elements of a year. While I was an easier job due to the lack of fleshiness, bones are cleaner to work with. There was an interesting and somewhat disturbing feeling that came over me when my eyes met the cause of that young man's death and joined in everyone else's silent realization. 
In a certain East Asian country, a man with mental issues beheaded a little girl in broad daylight. That was a terrible mess to clean up, physically and emotionally. I'm not sure where to find it, but there's a story of a guy who was murdered in the night along with his family, woke up in the morning after taking a shotgun blast to the face, if I recall correctly, and just started doing his morning routine, walked to the kitchen, then the bathroom where he tried to shave, and so on until he died right by his front door. Hopefully Reddit comes through with a link, but I remember that story freaking me out. Worked as a corpse transport not cleaner but had to pick a guy up that had passed away two days before in a hotel with the heat on. Human bodies sweat when they get hot while alive to cool down. Not the case after you pass away. Coroner's officer was gagging out the window. Smell was revolting something I will never forget. Second you touch the body liquids from all different areas poured out. Decided wrap body with sheet he was laying on and put in transport van. Longest smelliest 30 minutes of my life. Looked like a dog driving down the road with my head out of the window. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.